What I'm going to tell you is that may be one of the leading causes as to why puppies die early in life. So when it comes to dog breeding, there's a lot of questions and very few people that have the experience to sit down and give you some answers. So that's what we're doing today. We're going to be doing dog breeding questions and answers. So what's going on, Bully Fam? So this is going to be another dog breeding question and answers. So um, where my shed, um, I got a bunch of shipments that came in, as you can see, the express boxes. So this is more of an office, but um, we're storing. It's just we don't have enough space. We got to get the store rocking and rolling already. I was like, you know what? Let me take a 15 minute break um, from, you know, doing all the packaging and, and stuff like that. Shoot a video with you guys, you know, answering some of you guys' questions. Um, I love to answer you guys' questions, especially on the YouTube channel. Sometimes it's just, it's hard um, because we get so flooded with questions and, and emails and stuff like that. So that's where I like to take all the questions you guys ask um, and, and answer them in episodes like this so that then if somebody else has a similar question, their answer, their question gets answered. Um, as well as, drum roll, we're releasing um, new hoodies. Um, for the fall season. So November 1st, these will be releasing the Breeders Hacks University um, sweaters. I think they look <laughs> awesome. Um, you got Breeders Hacks on the sleeve as well. But um, yeah, this is actually, I mean, I can't take the credit. This was my wife's idea, but when she showed me it, I fell in love with it. I think it's a dope design. So anyway, guys, um, be on the lookout, breedershacks.com. You guys can snag yourself a Breeders Hacks University uh, sweater. Um, and there's some more shirts coming out and things like that. But anyway, let's get to the question. So Divinity Castro says, can you use it on small dogs? And they're talking about the flea treatment, the flea treatment episode where I show you guys, um, let's see it somewhere here, taking front line, purchasing it for a jumbo dog and breaking it down into smaller um, dosages for your smaller dogs. Um, you save a lot of money that way. So anyway, to answer that person's question, Yes, you can. You just got to dose it correctly. Um, if you go to the information center on our website, I have the proper dosages for smaller dogs. Check that out. Um, this is two questions, uh, two people that ask the same question. True Life Bullies and Cassidelion, Cass Cassidelion 9. I'm sorry if I get these names wrong, guys. Um, but they ask, they both ask, we would love to hear more about DCR. So DCR is Digital Canine Registry. And it's a registry that we created um, based off of the frustration that we have with a lot of these other registries between long wait times, between having physical papers. And then if you lose them, you have to pay, you know, 25 to 50 bucks to get new papers. Just a lot of frustration um, that we have with these registries, these regular registries. And I mean, as a breeder, to, to the average person, they may not care. But to a breeder who registers every single dog with these registries, we're putting a lot of money in their pockets. And just with some of the things that they could be doing better, we put that to DCR. So DCR is a digital canine registry. Your paperwork is digital. Not only that, you can save your paperwork. So say you're registered with like five other registries, you can still stay registered with them and take your numbers and add them to your digital certificate with, D with DCR. So that then now, if you ever lose those papers, you still have the number to your dog on your DCR certificate, as well as your DCR number as well. So I'm gonna do an episode going more in detail, but essentially it's it's a new registry and everything is pretty much digital, which which is none of these other registries are really doing. Equilus says, how do you get him to cooperate? And this episode, they're talking about how to treat ears and yeast infections. So the episode, you know, I was cleaning the dog's ear and stuff like that. And he asked, how do you get him to cooperate? Well, the first thing is I don't wait until the ear infection gets so bad that the dog is in so much stress. It's, it's bothering the dog so much that I can't get him to stay still. So the first thing is once you start seeing the black build uh, build up and you should clean your dog's ears on a regular basis, at least check them. Um, but once you see that black buildup, you're going to want to, uh, you know, clean it with like the monostat and the hydrocortisone and things like that. 
So um, that usually plays a large role. People wait till it's too late and then the dog is going crazy scratching it. As well as my dogs are used to it. I, I teach them, I train them that, hey, when I'm putting my hands on them to do something, whether it's drawing blood, whether it's clean the ears, whatever the case it may be, they stay still. And that's something I instill, I instill in them as young puppies. So Tom Yang says, do you ever get people who would rather not do a puppy contract? Would you cancel the deal? Um, I do get people who don't want to do puppy contracts. I would just say you as the breeder that really has to make that educated decision. I mean, what I would say is as the breeder, you need to make sure that if anything kind of goes bad, uh, say the puppy passes, anything, you got to think worst case scenario that you're covered. Do you have enough dogs that you could possibly replace the puppy? Things like that. A contract, a contract keeps things really simple. Um, and if they don't want to sign it, I'd be a little suspicious, but I mean, it's not the end of the world. And it also depends on how much money the puppy is, things like that. I would say it's all at, it's all at your own discretion. Um, I, I've sold puppies. Um, I've sold puppies without a contract. It wasn't the end of the world. At the same time, though, it was more going towards pet home situations. So it's a little bit different. If I was selling to like another breeder or something like that, nah, I'm going to do a contract. <laughs> Rebecca Reyes says, where can we buy this? And they're talking about um, the neonatal suction machine. Um, they were talk they were referring to, um, you know, when we were dealing with a puppy that uh, had pneumonia. Um, you can get it on breedershacks.com. Um, we have them on the site. They're always like selling out. So if you see them in stock, definitely jump on it. Um, we're working on, on trying to get more in. It's also a, a space problem as well. <laughs> but the store is hopefully going to help with that soon. Um, so yeah, breedershacks.com. You can hit the link in the description. Alicia Combs says, how soon do you check your female before breeding? Um, and they're talking about the pre-breeding treatment and flushing females out before breeding episode. Um, I think they're talking about like, how soon do I check her for, I, I'm, I'm not sure by this question. I don't know if they mean how soon do I check her as far as if she's in heat or how soon do I start her on like a pre-breeding treatment to flush her out. And the answer is when I first see sight of blood. So once I see her swelling up, you know, I'm looking for blood. Once I see the dog's vulva start to swell up, I'm looking for blood. Um, once I see blood, I start them on that pre-breeding treatment right away. And generally by the time I'm done with the pre-breeding treatment, it's time to do the breeding. Joe Varraro says, where can I get those tubes and stuff that you have for the flea treatment? So he's talking about the red top tubes um, that we use that we divvied up the flea treatment. Um, those red top tubes, you can get them online. Um, I don't think you need a prescription from them, um, but if you can't find them, you know, shoot me an email um, and we can hook you up with some. Tony Whiteside. So what he's asking is when a, when a female dog is pooling blood, has a lot of blood in her uterus, um, do you still have to, you know, remove that blood when you're doing a surgical breeding? Meaning they're gonna take the semen and surgically inseminate it in the female so they're going to make a tiny incision and insert the semen into the female versus having to do an AI rod, which is a rod that goes into her, you know, um, her vulva, into her uterus and inseminates that way. So what I would say is if you're doing a surgical, regardless, no matter how you're, you're inseminating the dog, even if you weren't breeding the dog, I'd probably remove that blood because, um, I'll put a clip somewhere here so you guys can see. I mean, pooling blood is crazy. That was, that, that was a cool episode. I'm not even going to lie to be able to show that on camera because um, it doesn't have it on all that frequent, but I wanted to show that. So anyway, I would remove that no matter what, because it was just old blood sitting there. So in my opinion, that was going to wind up turning into like a pyometra or something like that, especially if you don't have the dog on antibiotics. So my answer to your question is no matter what, I would remove that blood. I would get an AI rod in there and remove that blood, even if you're doing a surgical. Mike Mike says, if the puppy was constipated and I perform the enema, can I put a drop of care syrup in the milk formula to prevent this from happening? You could put care syrup in, in the milk formula and no matter what. I mean, in my formula that I use for um, feeding puppies, I add um, care syrup regardless. So, but care syrup alone doesn't ensure that the puppy won't get constipated. 
So the best thing you could do is when you're dealing with a conservated puppy, I mean, if you're going to give anything, you could give a few drops on the mouth of um, mineral oil and mineral oil is a natural laxative. If, if you take some mineral oil, it'll make you have to go too. have to use the bathroom. So just with that being said, um, you could do it. I, I don't think it'll make much of a difference, um, but mineral oil will help. And especially if you don't want to have to keep doing enemas, um, put some or give them some orally and it'll help pass things, you know, help things pass. But you want to make sure that the formula you're giving them isn't what's continuously making them get constipated. Um, whether you're doing a powdered version, if you're doing powder, make sure there's enough liquid that it's not getting too clumped up, things like that. So once you address all those issues, should be good to go. Top Predator Coalition says, what brand model microscope are you using? Plus, how long is the pipette that you guys use in this video? So the microscope that he's talking about is the one I got right here. Um, these are microscopes that come with a nice LCD screen. It has ports in the, the back that you can plug into the computer. Um, we sell these on breedershacks.com. Um, we use these so much. They became so handy in evaluating semen. Um, you could even use it to try to look at fecal tests and things like that. Coccidias, gyardias, stuff like that. It's, it's a great microscope. So we have them on breedershacks.com. That's where you can get yours. Um, hopefully that answers your question. So PV says, awesome info. Awesome info in this video. Can you do a video on how or what to do to prevent newborn pups from getting swimmer sw syndrome or flat chested? What I'm going to tell you is that may be one of the leading causes as to why puppies die early in life. When it comes to flat chested puppies, especially in these in, in the bully breed, people don't know about it. Um, so they're thinking the puppy has gotten pneumonia, um, some type of upper respiratory infection which I guess you could say it, it eventually get, it becomes, I guess, to a degree. But um, because of the flat chest syndrome, they don't realize to address it in time, in, in enough time, and how to correct it, how to fix it. They're given the Clavamox and all the antibiotics and things like that. A lot of vets aren't even as familiar when it comes to flat chested puppies, and then they die. I'm going, I'm going to do an episode on this. I promise you, I promise you. I promise you, the person asking, and I promise all you guys, I'm going to be doing an episode on this because... Um, it's super important. I'm just waiting um, till I link up with my buddy, um, No Days Off Bullies. He's a whelper. Um, we're we're going to do some collaborative episodes. So I'm saving that one for me and him. But um, we both have some great tips and tricks that you can use to prevent puppies from getting flat chested. What happens is the puppies are laying on a flat, hard surface like this, you know, in the whelping box with no cushion on their chest or anything like that. And it usually happens to the nice, thick, girthy puppies and their chest starts to sink in sinks in um and it's called a flat chested puppy you can use eggshell or egg crate whatever it's called that foam that you put on like your mattress or you can use like these these shag rug looking type of things and as long as you keep the puppy somewhat elevated um it'll help with getting the fluids you know circulating again and things like that because what happens is when they lay flat like that and it's untreated um they can't get proper circulation of fluids throughout their body and then that's where you get like pneumonia looking type symptoms and the puppies die and you don't know why. So, um, yeah, hopefully that answers your question. I know I went on a tangent, but it, 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 it bothers me a lot that I see. I've seen people bring their puppies here. And unfortunately, they, they I had a guy come here and the puppy passed before I could even get a look at it on the car ride here. Um, because if you wait too long to treat it, it's nothing you can do. So, um, yeah, it's a way, the way to prevent it. You can use some eggshell, like I said, the memory foam type stuff. You can use a shag rug, something lumpy. I know a breeder that even use rolled up socks. Um, or you can make like a little harness that's soft that protects the chest, things like that. Anything that's going to help keep this soft and protect it and not be on a flat, hard surface. Do you have any further questions, especially when it comes to the flat chested puppies? Contact me. Um, the way I even learned this was I had a puppy, the first time I seen it, I had a puppy and I held him and my friend had referenced the flat chest to me and I held the puppy and on um, its stomach, on its chest, it was flat. And um, that's when I realized, oh crap, we gotta do something because it had pneumonia-like symptoms. I thought it was pneumonia. Stephanie Bur Burrito says, I've always wanted a Frenchie, but if I ever wanted to start breeding, which is better to start with and make more profit, um, a male or a female? Uh, I've done an episode talking about if I had to start all over again, 
what would I do? And I would definitely, 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 hands down, start with a female. Um, hands down. I would start out with multiple females before a male. Um, because of the fact that with females, they can continue to produce puppies for you. A male, um, you're going to have to practically beg people to use your male to breed to their females. And if you have no um, proven track record with what your male can produce, um, the bloodline, things like that, you're not going to get far and you're going to have to go buy a female anyway. So you might as well start with a female. Um, so that's what I would do. And then when you finally do have a male, you can breed them to your females, show people what he can do. And then people want to, will want to come use your stud, your, your male. STM network says, uh, bro says, bro, I have a female I'm trying to breed in a few months. Um, where do I contact you for a stud fee? Um, you can contact us, uh, through the breederhacks.com, the website, we have our email there. We have a stud waiting list and a puppy waiting list. I'll just, I'll just mention both now. Um, our studs are usually, they have a certain amount of breedings that we do for the year and then that's it. They're closed. They, nobody else can use them for the rest of the year until the following year. So, um, we have a waiting list that, um, if you're interested in breeding in one of our studs, you can jump on the waiting list and get notified immediately. Um, when one of the studs open up as well the same thing goes for puppies if you're interested in a puppy um, You could you know jump on the waiting list and once a puppy is open you guys will get notified first before it even reaches Social media or any of that Brennan Yee Yik says how do you know the color if one parent is a tri carrier? Thanks the dog produces tri for you um, You could also get a color test as well a DNA test and, and see uh, you know What colors does it carry as well as look at the parents one of those three will tell you if the dog carries tri or not so here's the last and final question. Um, Travis Allen says, um, definitely do more of these videos. What semen extender are you using? And we use the Canny Plus. Um, I'll put a picture somewhere here. Um, and it, it's been working great. I really cannot complain about it. I have I have tested it with other extenders and I found this to get give us the best results. I'm shooting a, a newer episode that's gonna show you guys how to easily use it. Cause I mean, honestly, like if you don't wanna have to spin it down and do all the process that I did in, this, in, a, in a later episode, um, I actually don't go by its instructions. What I found that works best is for every like two cc's of semen, I'll add about like four cc's of extender which gives a total of 60 cc's. It's not too much because what I've been finding is a lot of people are going by what the instruction says and the semen extender just winds up being way too much. You have too much extender in there. And I've had actually an older breeder tell me that too much semen extender can actually kill semen. Um, and I think there's some truth to what he's saying because I did some testing and I found that um, not, as se not as much semen survived when I added a crap load of extender just like the instructions say. Um, I used a little bit less and the semen did a much better trip. So um, if I get four cc's of, of, of semen, for example, um, on a, and explain how to do this easily, say you don't have a centrifuge to ship it or whatever. Um, this happened to me when I was out of state shipping out for a, for a client. Um, if say you get four cc's, I'll put two cc's in one tube, two cc's in another tube, and then um, put four cc's of extender on each side. Now you got six and six, you know, for, for two separate breedings or whatever the case may be. That's going to be, uh, you're going to find a better success rate, especially when you're not spinning it down or anything like that. So, yeah. So Candy Plus is what we use. I know I went on a tangent, um, but yeah, that's going to be another episode. Um, that's the ratio. That, that's a good ratio if you're not spinning it down. If you're spinning it down, that's another scenario. But if you're going to, you're not going to spin it down and you're just going to collect uh, the, the, the fluid, do like a two to four ratio. Um, I find that works best. So anyway, guys, hope this information was helpful. Hope it was useful. Um, I got some really fun stuff I'm going to be shooting this week. So I just wanted to get this in real quick because I'm still editing other videos and whatnot. So I wanted to give you guys this quick video and answer a lot of you guys' questions because the questions have been piling up and I got a whole lot more. So I'm probably going to shoot another episode or two um, and then go to bed. I'm tired, guys. So I hope this information was helpful. I hope it was useful. Stay tuned for the Breeders Hacks University hoodies. Those are coming out as well as um, don't forget to like, share, subscribe to the channel. Um, and I'll see you guys on the next episode of Breeders Hacks.